Evil Dead the game's ranged weapon tier list after the Castle Kandar update. Let's jump into it. Um, so what we do know after this update is that everything got nerfed across the board um, from blue rarity to beyond. I think one of the weapons, I, I think it was like the shotgun, got nerfed from purple and legendary, something like that. But the point is ranged weapons pretty much got nerfed across the board. So that's something to keep in mind because um, a lot of these will kind of change where they shake out, where they go on the list. But as you can see here, these are all kind of at common rarity, which didn't change. So just keep that in mind. Um, we'll start down here in D tier. The first thing I'll put D tier is the lever action rifle. The lever action rifle is probably the only weapon in the entire game where I have no idea what scenario you would want this. <laughs> because you don't wanna pick it up as a hunter because if you're a hunter, you're there to deal a bunch of damage and this thing doesn't deal very much damage. So you'd much rather have a shotgun if, or, or even the hunting rifle if you're interested in dealing damage, which you should be as the hunter. And if you're not playing a hunter, you don't want to take this because it uses long gun ammo. So you don't want to be taking long gun ammo resources away from your hunter who's probably using a shotgun. So this gun is terrible. I think it's the worst gun in the game. I don't think there's any reason to ever pick this gun up, no matter what class you're playing. I'm certain I'll have somebody in the comments give me a well actually and tell me why the lever action is actually great. I think it's awful. I don't see any reason you'd ever want to pick this up. The only time I'd ever even consider it is when I'm playing support and the, and the damage is just dog water even with max ranged uh, perks equipped you can't one-shot basics with it. <laughs> like, you, you gotta use a revolver if you wanna be able to one-shot basics, and the revolver is strictly better because it doesn't use long gun ammo. And handgun ammo is more plentiful. You get more when you pick a box up, up the, off the ground. It's five ammo versus three ammo that you get with long guns. Um, you can hold more, so it's better for taking out mobs. So the revolver is just better in every way for that kind of uh, scenario. So the lever action I have is strictly D tier. Um, the other weapon I have down here is the pistol. I do think the pistol is more valuable than the lever action because there are scenarios where you might take the pistol. Um, the most obvious one would be on support ash. There is um, some usefulness to take the pistol on support ash because he could headshot a target, mark it without dealing too much damage so that somebody can like farm a heal off of it that is less viable now with his changes, which is something to keep in mind. So now the pistol is not as valuable as it was before. Now you're probably better off with a revolver because rather than farming heals off of units, it's probably better for you to like take a revolver or something like that, headshot a possessed unit. Um, and so then that way people could farm the mark damage on your mark, because that's mostly what you're gonna be using marks for now, rather than using it as an outlet to heal, because that's not as viable anymore, because that got kind of nerfed. And uh, also because it lasts for five seconds and the healing is nerfed, if you headshot something, they're probably if it's a basic unit, it's probably only gonna be alive for like one follow-up shot anyway, so it's not as helpful in that regard. But the main reason pistol is down here is because of, just like the hunting knife, this weapon is a huge detriment to your team if you get possessed because of the way it could stun lock your teammates. This thing is really bad on a hunter. I would never take a pistol on a hunter. I'm sorry, Amanda, but if you play Amanda, never take the pistol on Amanda because you will get, you will unless you are a god at dropping your weapon, whenever you get feared. Unless you, you know, ha are freakishly fast at doing it. I've heard controller players can hit the menu and drop something super fast compared to PC. If you're somebody who's really good at that, then maybe you pick up the pistol on Amanda, but outside of that, I would never take this on a hunter because it's so easy to stun lock a teammate and you can literally like stun lock your support from full health to, to death and downed. <laughs> So I would never take this pistol because of the way it can stun lock teammates. 
The only time I would consider this is if it's support Ash or maybe a warrior because a warrior doesn't deal a whole lot of damage ranged wise and you could possibly use it as a way to stun lock your hunter if they get possessed and to stop them from dealing a ton of damage. I have done that sometimes, but I've noticed uh, I still don't really like taking it on hunter because even with hunter's damage not being very good or uh, warrior, excuse me, warrior damage not being very good with ranged weapons, I still have a tendency to really stun lock uh, my supports deal pretty decent chunk of damage to them. So I, I don't like picking up the pistol pretty much ever. Um, after that, we have the crossbow in C tier. The crossbow, nothing's really changed about it apart from higher rarities getting its damage nerfed. Um, I bump it up a little bit because I think there's some viability to use this as like a boss killing weapon because I think compared to the last time I made my ranged weapon tier list, I didn't have the approach that I do now to playing Hunter, which is that your primary goal most of the time, and you'll see towards the end of the video that there's one exception to this. Your primary goal is to save your ammo for possessed units. So... Possessed basics, possessed elites, and then the boss. And considering that, um, it is more viable to take a weapon like the crossbow, in my opinion, now compared to then. Because most of the time, what you're going to be doing is the hunter is just kind of hanging back, waiting for that possessed unit to do something, whether it's like, you know, swing, and then they hold still at the end of their combo, and then you line up a headshot and hit it. That's especially easy to do on certain bosses, like Evil Ash. Evil Ash is just a statue <laughs> and just stands there whenever he finishes his combo. Super easy to hit headshots on him. And in that regard, um, the crossbow is actually super good because it does crazy damage, and if you took the crossbow on, like, Ed... It'd be really, really good on him for bossing. Um, so the crossbow gets bumped up a little bit because of that. Uh, the saw gun also gets bumped up a little bit because it's been kind of a recent development that you can use the saw gun in an interesting way to take out um, basic units that aren't possessed. You could shoot at their legs to take off their legs and then if they lose a leg, they just die instantly. So that's kind of a viable strategy if that's something you want to look into. I've seen the saw gun used as a decent strategy for like leaders, leader Ash specifically, as a way to proc his El Jefe Grande. They shoot at legs, get easy kills, and proc their special ability to boot. So it's a pretty nice little combination there. Um, it's a decent weapon, I think, for taking care of mobs so it's okay to take this on like you know a support you could maybe even take it on leader ash but i wouldn't recommend it on the other leaders and i wouldn't really recommend it on a hunter because i don't think it's very effective on possessed units and the majority of the time as a hunter you want to be taking something that's high damage to deal with possessed units and this this doesn't do a very good job at that but it's not a bad weapon to take on some of the other classes in, in order to take out, cut some knees out and take out some basic units. Uh, in B tier, we have, hmm, how did I have this sh shaken out? I think I had the blunderbuss in B tier. Man, I've really cooled off on the blunderbuss. Um, more often than not, the reload speed is just too much is what I've found. It's a great weapon, like, the reason I fell in love with the blunderbuss initially in my first ever range tier list that I did is because it is the ultimate weapon for stat chasing. <laughs> for whatever reason, this weapon does a ton of overkill damage whenever you headshot something. So like, if the only thing you care about is having a 200K damage done in the post games leaderboard, then the blunderbuss is what you wanna take. <laughs> So it's gonna make you look great, but it doesn't do a great job of helping you succeed in your role and ultimately win the match. So I don't think the blunderbuss is great in that regard. The reason I do have it in B tier though, <clears throat> is that it is a very effective weapon 
against the Necromancer. <laughs> um, it can one-shot the Necromancer if they don't have the perk that increase, or it can one-shot the Flautist if the Flautist does not have the perk that increases its health. If it's blue rarity or greater, it one-shots the Flautist no matter what. So it's a great weapon to have on, you know, support or warrior because it now allows those characters to one-shot a Flautist, which is extremely helpful. Where under normal circumstances, um, well, I guess I shouldn't say that because the Flautist has that weird thing going on where damage buffs don't apply to them. So um, it's good for that, okay? It's good for other classes uh, at, at killing the Flautist. I really like the Blunderbuss for that. Hunting Rifle is the same way. Hunting Rifle is even better because you get two shots on it. So if the best you could find is a common hunting rifle, you get two shots before you have to reload. So you're guaranteed to take out the flautist in those two shots. So I really like the blunderbuss for that reason. It's still a decent um, weapon for taking out possessions, but I think it gets knocked down a few pegs because of its reload speed. Um, even with ranged maxed out in game, it's really difficult to like dodge out of the way and then reload in time before the demon player could follow up with another attack. So it's reload speed really hurts it a lot, but I think it's a, a weapon you really want to prioritize on like non hunter classes. So that's why I got it in B tier now. Um, let's see. After that, I'd say that I've got the hunting rifle here in B tier. It's really in B plus tier. It's kind of just, better than the blunderbuss but the reason i have it on the same tier is that it is a long weapon so that's something you have to consider like if if your hunter on your team is using the bone stick in order to take out possessions and you're the support and you're playing against a necromancer you probably want to take the blunderbuss instead of the hunting rifle because you don't want to be taken away from the long weapon uh or the long gun ammo pool so that's why it kind of gets dropped down here Typically, you don't want to take the hunting rifle over the other long weapons if your job is to, you know, boss and take out possessed, un possessed units. It's also really hard to aim with. The blunderbuss shoots logs. The blunderbuss is super easy to hit headshots with. The hunting rifle is the hardest weapon in the game to hit headshots with. Well, I, I should say hardest hit scan weapon to hit headshots with. It's not harder than the crossbow and the saw gun because these are both projectiles. But the hunting rifle reticle is tiny. It's really hard to hit headshots with this thing. So that's why I'd kind of put it in B tier because there's sort of pros and cons to both of these. Um, you know, the blunderbuss uses special weapon ammo, which is a benefit to it. Um, but the hunting rifle gets two shots. So, you know, there, there's a trade off there. Um, after that, I would have the revolver in A tier. The revolver is just a fantastic weapon. This gun, absolute. I, I would not really take this gun on a hunter because I, again, I think that your job as a hunter is to go around and do a lot of bossing, taking out possessed units, and this is not a very good weapon for that. But it's an amazing weapon on like a support. Like the way I play Cheryl, I take a revolver, I'm one tapping basics because I'm specced into range damage on Cheryl. So I'm healing everybody. I'm contributing a ton in combat. And because I'm specced into range, I'm not getting involved into the thick of combat. So I'm not risking my own life. Like I'm on the outskirts, you know, taking pot shots at AI units and cleaning off AI units to help prevent my team from taking damage. And then as I monitor their health, once I see that their health is in jeopardy, I dip in for a second, drink a Shemps, pop an amulet, and then dip back out. And that really helps mitigate the amount of damage that I take as a, as a support and the amount of damage that my teammates take. So the revolver is an amazing weapon for like every non-hunter class. It's especially good on supports. I would take it on every support, even support Ash. I think it's the best weapon a support could take. Um, and I would probably even consider taking this on like a leader, assuming that my support doesn't, you know, want that weapon. Um, after that, I'm putting the pump shotgun here. Pump shotgun got hit pretty hard by this nerf. Uh, I'm not really sure why, <laughs> but 
but it, it did seem to get pre hit pretty hard by this nerf. I guess they really didn't like the pump shotgun. I assume it's because it did a lot of damage, but still had a very high ammo capacity. So they were probably like, hmm, you know, the boomstick and the double barrel, you know, don't deal a ton more damage, but you know, they have three less shots. So maybe we need to nerf the damage on the shotgun. So I, I, I think the shotgun has gotten dropped down a little bit. The shotgun's still an excellent, amazing weapon. But I do think it gets dropped down a peg um, because of this most recent nerf. Um, yeah, it just got hit pretty hard by it. It seemed like it got nerfed quite a bit. Uh, after that, I'd put the double barrel in here. And the only reason the double barrel is really an A tier is because it's just a worse in every way version of the boomstick. So that's pretty much it like it does i think it has maybe a little bit more range but the boomstick is, has similar like identical stats in every other way except it does a little more damage so if you're bossing unless you're playing hunter ash you're probably taking the boomstick on every hunter if what you're interested in is taking out possessions and when i say bossing that's what i mean anytime not just fighting bosses but anytime you're fighting a possessed unit so the boomstick, obviously, as you can tell, is an S tier. Um, here's the thing. All of those weapons got nerfed across the board. The shotguns got hit the hardest. They do not hit nearly as hard as they used to. But I still put them in this tier because they're still so... I still think they're the best weapons at killing possessed units super fast. And also the fact that they you have to be so close to shoot them really benefits on that like deadly up close perk. So you're getting and and the low clip also helps for the uh, the perk that makes it so the last clip in your in your magazine does more damage. Like so, it really benefits from a lot of the damage perks you could pick up. So that's why I still have these here because even though they got hit pretty hard by those nerfs, um, I still think they are the best weapons in the game for taking out bosses and possessed units now here's the big one the new weapon the explosive crossbow i've used the explosive crossbow extensively um to get a handle on where this is ranked and you may have heard me allude to this a little bit earlier in the video where i was like well hunter's job most of the time should be to pick up a high damage weapon and kill all the possessed units as fast as they can. This is the one exception that I was talking about, which is the explosive crossbow, which I think is firmly in S tier. And the reason for that is that it is the first AOE weapon in the game. So that means you could take out multiple units at once, and you could kind of do that a little bit with shotguns, but it's kind of difficult. Like, you got to get really up close and get... Mo, you know they have to be really bunched together and then the spread on your weapon will get it but it's 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 very difficult to do and really inconsistent the explosive crossbow is insane <laughs> so even though the majority of the time you want to take a high damage weapon so you take out possessed units because the explosive crossbow is not good at this so i would say most of the time if you're taking the explosive crossbow you only want to do so if you have like double double warrior or double hunter. So either another hunter on your team who can pick up the slack because you're not dealing a you know high damage to deal with possessed units, or you've got two warriors on your team that could just stun lock any possessed unit. So you don't really need to be there for you know dealing high damage because they're just gonna stun lock everything. But if you bring this with you this thing is disgusting because it basically handcuffs the demon for the entire game <laughs> this thing I, I can't oh i can't understate how ridiculous this weapon it is is it's probably gonna get nerfed i'm not gonna lie to you especially if you take this thing on ed but i also tested on other hunters other hunters also can one shot basics with this thing so you don't need necessarily need the 10% damage bonus that Ed gets. You, you literally take this thing, and when the demon spawns a portal, you shoot it at the ground, and it kills every unit that just got spawned out of the portal. <laughs> so, like, it makes it so the demon can't do 
like anything the whole match. It is it, the first time I used the explosive crossbow, I think I had 120 kills. <laughs> because all you don't have to aim, which is the downfall of the regular crossbow, because all you have to do is shoot at the ground. So you shoot at the ground, you're pretty much guaranteed to get hits. The damage on a non-headshot where you're just shooting at the ground is good enough to one-shot basics. The only exception I think I've ever seen is um, Necro basics can survive it if they have a flaw to step. So that's the only exception that I've seen. I don't even think that um, Warlord basics can survive it from the really bad influence ability. Like that buff they receive, I don't even think they can survive it. But I'd have to double, triple check that. But most of the time, the explosive crossbow is gonna one-shot basic units. And if you <clears throat> shoot it as soon as a portal spawns, you can, I've literally had moments at like Daggered Pages or the Dark Ones or the Necronomicon where they spawn a portal and clearly what they're trying to do is spawn a portal and possess a unit. And I, sh and I time it so well, I wipe out all the basics before they can possess. That's how crazy this explosive crossbow is. It could stop the demon from being able to do anything. So like if you are a hunter, normally you want to deal high damage to deal with possessed units. The explosive crossbow is so nuts a lot of times you don't have to because you're gonna be killing everything before they could even possess it. So the explosive crossbow is absolutely nuts. It makes it so your team basically has nothing to do for 90% of the match. Uh, effectively what it does is it makes it so the your, your three other teammates, all they have to worry about are possessed units. You by yourself, can take care of every AI unit on the field for the entire match. The only time it, th there you ever run into an issue is if you start to run out of ammo. And I have yet to have a game where that has happened without bad teammates. <laughs> so what I mean by that is I ha I've had a few games where I've ran out of ammo and then like one of my teammates died and then it turned out they had special ammo on them the whole time. <laughs> So even though I was pinging for special ammo 50 times, they'd never drop me any. So as long as your teammates work together and drop ammo for you, you'll have enough ammo to go last through the entire game. And this thing is just nuts, dude. I would not recommend, I will say this, it's S tier on hunters. I would not pick this up on anyone else because they you can't one shot basics maybe you can take that. I shouldn't say that. Maybe you can take this if the one hunter on your team is rocking a boomstick and that frees up somebody to use a special weapon, you could maybe take the explosive crossbow and then use it to uh, shoot it, basic unit's its feet, reload, shoot a second time, and the second shot is probably going to be enough to wipe them all out. Although I would say... Depending on your class, you probably want to get in there and just melee those units. You're probably going to kill them just as fast because you don't have the benefit of reload speed reduction like Hunter does. So in the time that you could fire off two shots from this thing, you could probably just as easily get in there with melee and wipe them all out. So <laughs> what you probably want to do anyway, because if they spawn a bunch of basic units, they're probably going to possess one of them and then you want to be in their face anyway. So maybe you could take the explosive crossbow on like a support. Um, a support would be a good idea. Although if I was, personally, if I was playing a support, I'd rather take a revolver. I think a revolver is better because it's a one shot to take out one unit. Whereas the explosive crossbow is gonna, you know, take you two shots. But it is definitely a viable option on support and it's insane on hunters. So let me know what you think. This is the hunter, the hunter, the ranged weapon tier list for Evil Dead the game after the Castle Kandar update. Let me know your thoughts. If you agree with this tier list, whether or not you think something should be uh, raised or lowered on the tier list. And I'd also like to hear your thoughts on the explosive crossbow. And if you think it's as insane as I do. Um, but thank you all for watching as usual. Uh, if you made it this far in the video, I appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I will see you all next time.